Oops. Oops. Okay, guys, you know how it works. I'm close to the door now, closer to the modem. It's connected to the modem. The internet is off. You know how it works. The modem takes a few minutes to kick in by the power of Jesus Christ, by the grace of Jesus Christ, and then no buffering. So when it buffers, don't panic because I panic and I lose my testimony. So we don't need everyone else to panic. You need to calm me down because oftentimes when it buffers, I want to lose my testimony. So good to see you guys. Yep. Good to see everyone, the regulars. Uh, someone was saying that you can schedule sessions on the new lab instead of Creator Studio. And I am using Creator Studio. I need someone to help me navigate the new lab so I can learn to be technically savvy so I can do live streams and even announce them and the time that I go on. That'd be nice, Magdalene. Yes, you can, right? There you go. You can, well, send me a, you can also send them to me on Skype if you want. Whatever is more easier for you. But good. So welcome, everyone. I'm going to be doing two sessions today, meaning this session on explaining John 17, 3 in response to Joe's witnesses. And then I'm going to go live, God willing, Lord Jesus willing, live with John McRae on his YouTube channel, What Do You Meme? And he's going to have me on at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is New York time. God bless you, Kevin. Lord Jesus bless you. The Spirit bless you and everyone else for the glory of Jesus. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to refute the objections of Marcus Rogers against the triunity of God. Now, I haven't seen the video. He's going to be playing the video and his comments. And by the grace of God's Spirit, will be responding to his claims to show the Bible is thoroughly Trinitarian. And the Bible cannot be interpreted accurately, honestly, reverently <clears throat> to depict God as other than Trinity. If you're going to interpret the Bible correctly, if you're going to handle the Bible with integrity and reverently, for the glory of Jesus, there's no way you can walk away denying that the Bible clearly teaches the triunity of God. Impossible. Now, if you are deceived and a deceiver, if your mind has been corrupted, <clears throat> demonized, <clears throat> then you can make the Bible say anything you want, right? Anyway, the reason why I'm close to the door today, because this is a reminder Jesus Christ, our Lord, says he is the door. If you go to John chapter 10 and you read verses 1 to 10, Jesus is the door. So I want to remind you, Christ, our Lord, is the door. Amen? He is the way, the truth, and the light. You have to go through him to enter glory. So you see how God set it up? I position myself closer to the uh, to modem, and I'm right close to the door as a reminder. May the Holy Spirit remind us. There's only one door to enter glory where we will never die. And that door is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in the flesh, Emmanuel, Yahovah, Jehovah, incarnate. So let's pray for the regulars to show up. I've been blessed this past two weeks. How are you? Abdullah Aman is here. Michael Papist, God answered your prayer. Abdullah Aman is here. Guys, Abdullah Aman, our Muslim friend is here to listen to my interpretation of John 17, verse 3. So God is working in this man's heart. Through your prayers to the Holy Spirit, God will bring Abdullah Man, Andrew Griffin, and even Andrew Martin to the feet of the true Jesus and fall in love with the true Jesus as their God and Savior, the eternal Son who became flesh, right? I've been blessed for the past couple weeks. We've gotten our numbers higher even though I block people like it's going out of style. <laughs> We've actually gotten as, as high as 160, 175. Pray we break that 200 and we get more because I want more people to be blessed by this channel. I want to be used the Holy Spirit to reach more people for the glory of Jesus Christ. And before we begin in prayer, I want you to truly pray <clears throat> for the mods, especially Protestant believer who couldn't be here with us. Because if you see my YouTube channel, within the last 24 hours, Protestant Believer has uploaded my sessions from Pal Talk that I did 
over 10 years ago. In some cases, close to 20 years ago, because <clears throat> there was a brother in the Lord Jesus and a sister in the Lord Jesus, Maggie May, who went to be with Jesus Christ. She entered her everlasting rest years ago. She was a soldier who loved Jesus Christ. They used to record my Pal Talk sessions. And they have their own YouTube channels. Now, Maggie May can no longer manage her channel. She went to be with Jesus Christ. So they would record my sessions on Pal Talk. And now, thanks to our brother Protestant, who's suffering from Alzheimer's, the Lord Jesus bless him. He is a computer guy. He's tech savvy. He is taking time, of his own, time out of his own schedule. He doesn't get paid for this. He does it because he loves Jesus, and he believes that Jesus is using me to bless people. He is now downloading and then uploading them to my YouTube channel. Pray that the Lord Jesus bless him and his family. Bless all the mouths here who helped me to help you, like first and last. Thank Jesus for such people. Thank Jesus for your teachers. Thank Jesus for your pastors. Thank Jesus for these servants who serve you by serving the apologists and pastors in order to do the work of God, because that's God's grace. The Holy Spirit raises up these individuals and puts a passion in their hearts to want to do this for the glory of Jesus. He's not getting paid. He has to work a full-time job. He has a family that he has to tend to, and so he makes time to do this. It's a labor of love because he loves Jesus. So praise the Father, Son, Holy Spirit for these gifts. Now, guys, pray that we can get more people, invite more people. Because like I said... We hit about 175 one time. That was a blessing. For me, that's a lot. For David Wood, that's like, oh, my goodness, only 175? But I saw yesterday's numbers were dropping because he's getting boring. You're only about at 600. No, anyway. With that said, let me give you a link, and we're going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to pray. When I say the Lord to pray, obviously, the Lord Jesus does pray. He intercedes for us. We're going to ask the Lord Jesus to bless us so Holy Spirit saves me from error, from stammering, from confusion, from stumbling and causing you to stumble. But I want to give you this article. This is related to Islam. Some of you are called to witness to Muslims like Andrew Martin. I just finished a response. If you click on that link, remember, you have my permission. Upload my videos to your YouTube channels. Download, upload my articles to your websites. Just please keep the names intact. <clears throat> and also disseminate them freely. Don't sell them. And you even have permission to make clips Take clips from my sessions. I want this information to spread. If it's information from the Spirit, if it's solid, blessed by the Holy Spirit, I want it to spread to embolden, empower Christians, inoculate them from considering another religion, and to convict all groups that deny the Trinity in the Bible of their sin and that the Spirit will use this to bring them to the feet of Jesus Christ, the God-man, their only hope of salvation, right? Wow, the Holy Spirit. Now, that article, Derek Shenji, welcome, but my friend. Derek Shenji wanted to know if I was anti-Catholic, and I'm going to comment on that in a minute. Okay, that article has to do with the narration found in Ibn Majah that David Wood uses, even has a video on it, where a goat, a tame sheep, trumped Allah and his messenger. Are you ready? Let me Give me a few minutes just to talk about this, and we're going to go into the meat. Right. <clears throat> According to a report that Sheikh Al Albani, who was considered one of the greatest Hadith scholars of the 20th century, graded as Hassan. Another Muslim authority graded it as Sahih. Hassan means good. It's good report. Sahih means sound. No dispute. Aisha, here it is. Let me give you the link again. Please click on it if you want to really laugh and see how irrational. How stupid, how evil, how immoral Islam is. This part uh, article, right? This article will give you some more proof. Even Abdullah Aman. Now, Abdullah Aman comes from a Muslim background. Notice what he said. Goat ate my Quran. See, God is working in this man. God is opening his heart to see how irrational, illogical, stupid, false, evil, immoral Islam is. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for this man. He's hungry for the truth, and God is answering him. Now, in this article, I address the attempt of Muslims to deny a report that says this. Listen, guys, please. You really, you got to listen. You really want to laugh? Okay. 
A report attributed to Aisha, Muhammad's child bride, says she had a sheet, a copy, upon which were certain Quranic verses. Now, guys, are you ready to really get disgusted? You want to laugh and get disgusted? Who's ready? Who's really now attentive? It's Sunday. It's the Lord's Day, the day that Jesus Christ conquered death, destroyed the power of sin, Satan, and the grave, rose physically, bodily, and now glorified his physical body, immortalized his humanity as a guarantee that we too will be raised in our bodies, bodies transformed to, to become immortal, indestructible, where we will be like Jesus and we'll be morally incorruptible, where we cannot sin and die ever again. Glory to the Lord Jesus for that victory. Okay, now, with that said, on this day, may the Spirit fill us with fire and passion to be on fire for Jesus, in love with Jesus, and live for the Lord. Okay. This sheet, according to the report, it's in my article. This sheet, according to the report, contained verses on stoning adulterers. It also contained a verse which permits, guys, you know this. You've heard it. If you follow David Wood, if you followed me over the years, Christian Prince, our brother in Christ, fellow soldier. <laughs> I, I'm just like even thinking about it, I'm getting shocked. Muhammad permitted, guys, here. Listen to this. And not many of you know it. Many of you may be hearing it for the first time. See, Behret saw it. Muhammad allowed women to allow grown men, grown men, not family members, to suck their breast a certain number of times in order to make that grown man her foster son so that now he could enter into her company without this being unlawful. Because in Islam, you have what's called the mahram. Mahram means the person that is allowed to enter the presence of a woman. That person is her father, her brother, her husband, her son, so on and so forth. However, if, you, if there's some stranger or some friend of the family and he wants to enter your house, and your husband's not there, or he can't. But there is a way in which you can allow him to come in. You take out your breast, let him suck your breast ten times. He now becomes your foster son, and you become his foster mother. Okay? Did you know that? I have an article on this, and I'm going to give it to you. Yep. Now, secondly... This sheet that Aisha had, had the verse saying, suckle a man 10 times, let him suck your breast 10 times, and he's lawful. He becomes your foster son. But guess what Allah did? Allah made it easier on the women. Having a woman allow a man to suck her breast 10 times is kind of too much. So Allah reduced it to five. He abrogated it. So he sent down a verse saying, you can reduce it to five. Now the verse that said 10 and the verse that abrogated it to five was on the sheet. And Aisha said, when Muhammad died, we got busy with the death of Muhammad, and a sheep entered my house, found the sheet with these verses under my bed, and ate it, and those verses have disappeared. She was the one who had the only copy of these verses. She alone had this copy with the verses of stoning and suckling grown men, and a sheep destroyed it, with the result being, these verses are gone, disappeared, nowhere to be found. That means a sheep trumped Allah and his messenger. A sheep devoured revelations that Allah sent. A sheep erased revelations of Allah. So that because of that sheep, till this day, Muslims don't know what those verses said about suckling grown men. They're gone. It's gone. So a sheep destroyed at least a part of the Quran, erased a part of the Quran, so that those verses have disappeared to time, and Allah and His Messenger could do absolutely nothing about it. So a sheep proved to be more powerful than Allah and His Messenger. Here's the link. So what in this article is, I refute the Muslims who out of embarrassment try to deny the authenticity of that report. They're so embarrassed by that report, they say it's weak. 
So by the grace of Jesus Christ, I thoroughly refuted that claim in this article. So I'm going to post it again. And in this article, I give you a link to another article where I show how a sheep <clears throat> trumped Allah and his messenger because the sheep proved to be more powerful than Allah and his messenger. Okay? Everyone with me there? Now, who could believe this religion is from God? So that means woman, Hafsa, Anna, Ma Magdalene. If you ever want someone to visit you, a man who's not your family member, take out your breast, let him suck it five, five times, and that's okay. He can now visit you because now you become his foster mother. What an awesome deal. That's really going to cure my lust for that woman. That's really going to remove any lust I have for that woman. Seeing a woman stick out her breast and allowing me to suck it. Oh, now you know what? I'm fine. I will never, ever have one lustful desire for you ever again. Now that you showed me your breast. And love, what sexual desire? It's, it worked. How amazing is Allah and his messenger? Thank you, Pedro. It is. So the real miracle, folks, the real miracle is that people think this religion is of God. People think Muhammad was a prophet and the Quran is God's word. That's the miracle. That's the miracle. That's the real miracle, right? Even a blind man can see Muhammad was an agent of the devil and the Quran was a book concocted by Satan through the medium Muhammad to deceive people from the true God, the true Jesus, the true gospel, his true word, the Holy Bible, to receive the true spirit. But that's where we come in. Mike AD, same thing. Mike, Mike asked a good question. What does a man have to do to have a woman come? Same thing, Mike. He's got to allow her to suckle him. Right? So anyway. Now, what was that brother's name? He just asked me a question. Derek Shaji. Okay, he asked me a question. Derek, I did a series on communion of saints on my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and Derek Shaji, search for Communion of Saints. I think it was three parts. To answer your question, what's my view about Catholics? Let me repeat it again for the record. By the grace of God's Spirit, I've reached a point in my faith. Now, many are going to disagree with me. Don't stone me. That's where I'm at. If I'm wrong, I trust the Holy Spirit to sanctify me and correct me and guide me in all truth for the glory of Jesus Christ. So to answer your question, I believe there are true believers born of the Holy Spirit, sealed by the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, and all the major branches of Trinitarian Christianity. Trinitarian Christianity. Meaning I do believe there are true believers in the Catholic Church, in the Orthodox Church, in my church, the Church of the East, the Assyrian Nestorian Church, even though we're not Nestorians. That was a misnomer, a label placed on us wrongly, wrongfully. Coptic Church and various Protestant denominations. Okay. I believe that. And I also believe there are false Christians in all these denominations. That's my position. So there are things I disagree with many of these churches, and they disagree with me. But in my view, I can agree to disagree and still consider a person, a brother or sister in Christ, if they're in love with the Trinity, in love with the God-man Jesus, in love with his word, the Bible, and seek to live it out for the glory of Jesus. So now you know where my position is. But if you come from a tradition in which you want to attack me and try to expose me, quote-unquote, discredit me, then the gloves are off. I'm going to go for the juggler and treat you as an unbeliever. So that's my policy. Okay? That's where I stand. That's me. If you disagree with me, forgive me. If I'm wrong, may the Lord save me. Now, with that said, we love you, Father. We come beseeching your favor and blessing and anointing on the session in Jesus' name. The name of your heart that became flesh. The name of your beloved son that became flesh. The virgin born son of Mary. The Lord Jesus Christ. Your beloved. Our beloved. The Lord Jesus. Your son whom we love. Our hearts are his throne. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Father for the sake of your son. Bless this session Lord. Bless me to speak clearly without error. Save me from stammering. Save me from confusion. Save me from error. Enable me by your Holy Spirit to recall the passages. Interpret them correctly for the glory of the beloved, the Lord Jesus, your heart, our heart, our love, our Savior. And bless everyone here by the power of your Holy Spirit to understand the depth of Scripture, not to get confused or lost 
but enlighten them with wisdom and knowledge from the Spirit. Save me from misquoting Scripture. Save me from stammering and confusion. Save them from confusion. Save us from distractions of Satan, Father. Surround us with a wall of fire from your Holy Spirit and our loved ones. Surround my daughters with a wall of fire from your Holy Spirit. Cover us by the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. The blood of Jesus, our shield against Satan and his children. And crucify our flesh. Save us from the lust of our flesh. To mortify our flesh and walk in the life of the Spirit. The passion of the Spirit. The fruits from your Holy Spirit to be more like Jesus for your glory. Because we love you, Father. And we need to love you more. We love you, Lord Jesus. We need to love you more. Holy Spirit, we love you. And we need to love you more. Give us the power to do that. Give me the health I need. Fill my lungs and my chest and my throat with the breath of life so I can teach. And give us the holiness that we need to delight your heart. Have your way with this session and bring them, Father. Lord Jesus, bring them. Holy Spirit, bring them. Help me be a, bl a blessing to them and not a curse. We thank you, Abba. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Increase our numbers for the glory of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Yeah, Abba, Father, Holy Spirit. Hold on, treat it. Treat it. Let me change the topic, treat it. Let me change the topic. Let me cancel John 17, 3, because you can't wait. You're not patient. You want me to do Romans chapter 9. Guys, treat it demands. I do Romans 9, predestination. So I'm going to change topic. I'm going to shut down. I'm going to start... We love you, Father, we do. Save us from our flesh. Help us to love each other the way Jesus loves us. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help me. Holy Spirit, help me to bless your people in Jesus' name. All right. You guys ready? Brethren, help me to help you. I don't want to cause you to stumble, but don't cause me to stumble. You see, there's a title. Look at the title. Answering Joe's Witnesses' Objections, Who is the Only True God? Why then ask me about some other topic that's not the focus of this session, which means if I address your question, I get off topic. Remember, if the Lord Jesus tarries and we pray he comes sooner than later, and that when he comes, we're clothed in his righteousness, washed in his blood, to be worthy of his coming. If the Lord Jesus tarries and he gives me health to stick around, I will teach on these subjects in time, in due course. I can't all do it in one session. I'm already trying to do two sessions for the time being as we're quarantined, until they allow us to go back to work. When you guys are given permission to go back to work, I'll be doing one session at least every day or at least several times a week, but I'll still be writing and studying, and hopefully I'll still be worshiping Jesus and loving Jesus because that's the focus of life. Okay, Shredded? Okay, I don't know why you call yourself Shredded, but that's a scary name. Just don't shred me, Shredded. Amen. Now, let's begin. Everyone ready? Let's begin. Let's go to John 17, 3. This is an, in fact, let me bring up the email. Hold on. First and last, thank you for coming, brother. Are you able to post verses? You may be the last to come here, but you're always the first to leave. You believe it? First and last. He is the last to get here and the first to leave. All right. Let me first get the email. I'm answering a series of objections by a Jehovah Witness on Facebook. For a brother in the Lord Jesus named Ben Benyamis. Benyamis, right? I think that's his name. Let me find it. Let me read it. Yep, I went to the wrong email. Sorry. I think that's his name because he had an S at the end. I may be wrong. Let me double check. So let's read what this person says about John 17 3, so I can give you a context in addressing this. And I'm gonna also address it from several angles. Jehovah's Witnesses use this passage. Muslims use this passage. Unitarians who deny that Jesus is God in the flesh, they use this. Yep, his name is Ben Yamis. Ben, ben Jemis. Go. All right. They use this passage. Okay. Now, I'm going to kill at least three to four birds with one stone. Here's this conversation that he said took place on Facebook. Now watch here. What does this person say? And he said it's a female Jehovah Witness. Female Jehovah Witness. So we already just John 10 30 yesterday. Lord willing, by his grace will answer John 17 3. Also, John 17 3. This means everlasting life. They're coming to know you, the only true God and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. Now notice the objection. In order to attain everlasting life, who do we have to come to know? The only true God and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. So what's the implication? 
if she is a Jehovah Witness, a female Jehovah Witness, she's trying to imply Jesus is not the only true God. Jesus was sent by the only true God. And because he was sent by the only true God, he cannot be the only true God. Everyone understand the objection? And guys, do pray for Hafsa's father. Hafsa left Islam for the beauty of Jesus, but her father is still a Muslim. Pray in Jesus' name. God will shine his face upon all her family members. They come to know the true Jesus Christ, the true Son of God, our Lord and Savior. And also, guys, I haven't said this enough, but let me share some with you. It's not just people who come out of another religion who have family members that need to be saved. I'm the youngest of six siblings. I'm the youngest of six. And I can tell you, none of my brothers and sisters or their children or their grandchildren are walking with Jesus Christ. They'll tell you they're Christians. They tell you they believe in Jesus. But by their fruits, you can see they don't know the Lord and they don't live for Jesus. And I'm the youngest of six. Now, I'm not saying I'm the standard. I desire by the power of the Holy Spirit to live holy and faithfully and love Jesus by my actions. That's my desire. Though I fail, I grieve. I don't want to sin. I want to mortify sin and live for Jesus Christ. But my family members, they'll tell you, yes, Jesus, but they don't know his word. They don't desire to study his word. They don't have a relationship with him. They're not speaking to him. They're not allowing the Lord to speak to them by hearing his word. They're in the world. Okay. They're in the world. So just because, just because you may have someone who comes out of a, another religious tradition and their family members need prayer, that doesn't mean you are a Christian, that your family members don't need prayer. Because in my case, all my family members were baptized when they were infants in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. And none of them, none of them live up to their baptism. And they don't have a desire to. And I say this with, with regret. And I've learned long ago, I'm not the one to speak truth in their life because they won't hear it from me. You know what our Lord said? A prophet is not without honor except among his countrymen. Right? Among his countrymen. And in my family, I'm the baby. I'm the dummy. I'm the ignoramus. And I don't know what I'm talking about. So they won't hear me out. You get my point? To them, oh, I'm just their baby brother. Oh, yeah, I'm just this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I don't have a relationship with my family members. And there are certain family members that if I am a, a, around them too long, they'll cause me to stumble and sin and make me lose my testimony because of how wickedly selfish, disrespectful, and rude they are in the way they talk to me. Right. And for the sake of Jesus Christ, I avoid them so I don't lose my testimony in sin and put them in their place and then shame Jesus. God forbid. I pray I never do that. That's the kind of relationship I have. So don't assume just because you're you come from a Christian background that your family doesn't need salvation and prayers. In fact. Their judgment will be worse than a non-Christian. What do I mean by that? The Bible says those who profess to know Jesus, those who profess to be Christian, those who profess that Jesus is Lord, but fail to honor him and submit to him, their judgment will be worse than a Hindu or a Muslim who wasn't raised in a Christian home under a Christian influence. You know that? So their judgment will be worse. Because when they stand before Jesus Christ, the Lord's going to say, what was your excuse for not loving me and worshiping me and honoring me. You said, you know, I was a son of God. You claimed that I am Lord. You said you knew the Bible was my word. What excuse do you have? That Muslim denied the Bible. He said, the Bible's corrupted. Didn't believe I'm the son of God, but you said, you believe the Bible. You believe I'm the son of God. You even said I'm Lord, but you live for the devil. You live for your wicked, sinful, corrupt, immoral passions. Chain me in the eyes of unbelievers and refuse to acknowledge me and love me and live for me, but you ran to me in your time of need, and that's all, and that's the only time you remembered me. So what's your excuse?
You, you, what my point? You see my point? So there's a blessing and a curse in being born in a Christian family. There are pluses and minuses. The curse is when a family member thinks he or she's a Christian but lives like the devil, engaging in premarital sex or adultery or stealing or lying or cheating or slandering or drinking or watching porn, you name it, and yet they still claim to be Christian. Their judgment is going to be worse. May God have mercy. So my family needs prayers. I'm the youngest of six. We're four boys, two girls. And with the exception of my older brother who's now living with me, glory to Jesus, he just moved in yesterday. So my brother has now lived with me. Pray for our unity. Pray God bless him. Pray God will use me in his life to bring him to the feet of Jesus. Okay? All, of, all except him, they have children. And some of them are even married. And none of them are walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. None of them know the Lord Jesus Christ. None of them submit to Jesus Christ. Right? None of them. And Aldi, just for the record, I don't know if you know, Aldi actually is one of my best friends. He's a brother from my heart. He actually, we grew up in the same area. We knew each other even before we were Christians. So he knows my family. He knows what I'm talking about. Pray for Aldi. Pray for his lovely wife. God has blessed him with a godly wife who <clears throat> maintains a godly household as he's <clears throat> the breadwinner to make sure his, his <clears throat> four boys and his daughter are taken care of and fed. Pray the Lord Jesus bless him and his wife and his children that they walk with Jesus. Okay. So now with that said, just wanted to say that. And I said that because... We were praying for Hafsa's father who's a Muslim. But we forget, and I want to, I don't want to keep, but I need to mention this. As long as the Holy Spirit guides these conversations, as long as the Holy Spirit directs the course, we will be blessed because it'll be him taking over the session, not me. And I pray he takes over. So I want to just remind you guys, just because you come from a Christian background doesn't mean your, your family doesn't need salvation. They may need, may need it more desperately than the non-Christian because their judgment will be worse. Guys, remember what I'm saying. According to the scriptures, if you profess to be a Christian and you've been raised in a godly household and been exposed to Christian, Christian influence, like exposed to the church and the Bible, and you still live like the devil, your judgment will be worse. You, want, you guys want me to give you scriptural backing for that? You want me to show you in the Bible where the Bible says that? You guys want me to give you that? You want me to take a moment to show you this? Because the goal of my sessions is not just to refute heretics, but teach you the Bible so you can live it out. My goal in these sessions is to be used of the Spirit, to teach you the depth of Scripture, to understand Scripture, so then you can live it out passionately in love for Jesus, to be more in love with Jesus. That's my goal. It's not just refuting anti-Trinitarians or heretics. Okay, now, Luke 12, 47 to 48. Luke 12, 47, 48. Now, Derek Shaji, you know where I'm coming from now, right? As long as you love me for the sake of the Lord, I'll love you. Luke 12, 47, 48. Let's read. Luke 12, 47, 48. That servant, pay attention now, who knew his master's will. Jesus thought about a Christian who claims to be a servant of Christ. Who knew his master's will, but did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. Now notice 48. 48 should scare you. But he who unknowingly committed acts worthy of punishment shall be beaten with few stripes. For to whom much is given of him, of him much shall be required. And from him to whom much was entrusted, much will be asked. Now let me un unpack this. Jesus says, the servant who knows the will of Jesus who knows the Bible but fails to act upon it, he'll be beaten more severely than that Christian servant who didn't know the master's will and did things against the master out of ignorance. That means my judgment will be much worse than yours because I've been teaching the word for over 20 years, I believe over 20 years, and I've been teaching others what the word is, so my judgment will be much worse. You see what? So the more gifts God gives you, the more blessings God gives you, 
The more God has entrusted to your care, the greater your judgment if you fail. That's what it said. But now let me unpack what it says about the servant who did things in ignorance. Because Lord says he'll also punish those servants. He'll also punish those servants who did something that was sinful without knowing, without being aware. But they'll be beaten less severely. Notice two things. Sink in. Not everyone will be punished to the same degree of severity. Some people will be punished more severely. That's the first thing I want you to note. Did you notice it? The one who knows God's will and doesn't act upon him, he'll be beaten more severely than the one who was ignorant of God's will. So not all punishment is the same. Not everyone will be punished to the same degree of severity. Some people will be punished more severely. Others less. Did you get that first point? That's the first point I want you to get. That's the first point. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I told you you're going to buffer a little bit. Okay. Now the second point. Why would the Lord punish a servant who didn't know the master's will? Notice Luke 12, 48. Don't panic. Go buffer for a little bit. We'll get back. Luke 12, 48. That's why, Punisher Lee, you have to be on my social media pages, Facebook, because I announce before I go on. Because as Andrew Martin stated, it seems like YouTube has shadow banned me. No one gets my notices. And Christian Prince has been having the same problem. No one gets his notices either. Anyway, Luke 12, 48. But he who unknowingly committed acts worthy of punishment. Why would Jesus punish the servant who unknowingly, unknowingly sinned against him? In other words, he didn't know he was sinning. Why would the Lord punish someone for a sin he didn't know he was committing, he was ignorant of? Why would he do that? Is that fair? Please. SD, don't bring up Catholic purgatory. That's not what he's talking about. Please don't change the subject. I don't want to end up refuting you. Focus or I'm going to ban you from my channel. Okay. Yeah, get this guy out of here. Yeah, get this guy out of here. He wants to preach his, his nonsense. Yeah, don't come back here. Okay. Let me explain why the Lord would hold a Christian, because he's not about his servants, those who claim to be Christian. Why would he punish a Christian who's ignorant of his will? For doing something that he wasn't aware was sinful. Why would the Lord do that? Do you know why he would do that? You know, but it says he won't punish him as severely. Do you know why he'll do that? He'll beat him, but less severely. you know why? Is that fair, Lord? Why would you do that? Why would you punish someone who claimed to be a Christian for committing a sin that he or she wasn't aware that they were committing because they didn't know? Thank you. Hafsa answered it. Jesus would say, what's your excuse for not knowing? Wait, you said you were a Christian, right? Yes. So you know that I'm Lord, right? Yes. And you know the Bible's my word, right? Yes. Why weren't you studying it? You have no excuse for being ignorant. That's why. You're not like a Muslim who denies the Bible. You're not like a Hindu who doesn't read the Bible. You're saying you are my servant. You're saying you're a Christian. That means you're saying you know me, that I'm your Lord, your son. Well, how do you know me? And how do you know anything about me if you're not going to the Bible? So you have no excuse for being ignorant because I gave you my manual, but you never bothered to pick it up and read it and understand it. That's not my fault. Catch it now? No, John, I'm not. Everything good, everything perfect, John, comes from the triumph God, the Father, Son, and Spirit. So give him the glory for raising up people like me and giving us this wisdom. He gets the glory. No attention to me. Okay? I am honored that the Lord would use me to bless you. That is an honor in Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus is judging Abdullah. You want me to show you where Jesus judges Abdullah? You want me to show where Jesus says he judges everyone? The Father has committed all judgment to Jesus, meaning Jesus will judge everyone, judge you, judge me, and judge Muhammad, your prophet. Okay, John 5, 22 to 23. Let's help our friend Abdullah on his way to the truth because he's coming to the true God. He's coming to know Jesus as his God and Savior. 
So John 5, 22, 23. Abdullah, read this. This is from the words of our Lord Jesus. Guys, let me engage him. Please help me to help, help him. Don't distract him because he wants to read these verses. John 5, 22 to 23. The Father judges no one. This is Jesus speaking, Abdullah. The Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. All judgment to the Son. So Jesus is saying, my Father has appointed me to judge everyone. And here's the reason why. Abdullah, pay attention. Why the Father has appointed the Son to judge everyone. Here it is in verse 23. That all men should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. So Abdullah, Jesus will judge everyone for this reason. The Father wants you, Abdullah, wants all Muslims, all humans to know that Jesus is your judge, will determine where you will live eternally because the Father wants you to honor Jesus the same way you honor the Father. The Father wants you to honor, love, worship, and obey the Son to the same degree that you love, honor, and worship the Father. So can I ask you a question, Abdullah? Did Muhammad honor Jesus as God's son? Did Muhammad give Jesus the same honor that he gave to God? Or did he deny that Jesus is the son of God? Abdullah Man just said no. Abdullah Man, according to the words of Jesus in the gospel, where is Muhammad for rejecting Jesus as God's son, the one who will judge all flesh, meaning even Muhammad, and determine where you will live forever? Where is Muhammad according to the words of Jesus, Abdullah, in the gospel of John? Where is he, my friend? You see, he's getting convicted. Don't pressure him, guys. Don't bother him. Give him space to think. Let the spirit work in his heart. Don't go after him. He's getting convicted. I just told Yahya, don't say anything. J36, yeah, he can't help himself. Don't pressure him. Let him be because this is shaking his foundation. He is getting rocked at his core because that means he's now confronted. Send more one piece out of here. Send one piece out of here. He's now confronted with the reality that if he believes the Bible and accepts Jesus' words, Muhammad is in hell. And that is too much for a Muslim to accept until the Holy Spirit sets him free. So leave him be, guys. Leave him be. Respect me. Let him breathe. Give him some breathing room to think and wrestle with these issues because the Holy Spirit is convicting him. The Holy Spirit is haunting him in love. Leave him be. All right? Pray for him. Let him alone. Give him space. There is no one more qualified, more better, more powerful than the Holy Spirit to bring people like Abdullah to the feet of Jesus. Don't help the Holy Spirit out. Okay? Unless the Holy Spirit wants to use you. Now, with that said, are we ready? So do you see? The Bible says those who claim to be servants of Christ, those who claim to be servants of Christ, and fail to honor the Lord, their punishment is severe. Okay? Now, now let's focus. Don't address Abdullah. Leave him alone unless he asks me a question. Let's go to the topic. John 17, verse 3. John 17, verse 3. Are we ready? Man, everyone's getting timed out left and right. It's okay, Andrew. Don't get too excited. If they're not addressing Abdullah, if they're addressing me or praising the Lord, asking questions, that's fine. Andrew's really trigger happy because Andrew, look, Andrew is more excited than me to get a Muslim saved. And he professes to be an atheist. The guy's a great evangelist because deep down inside, he knows Jesus lives and he will be worshiping Jesus. Anyway, John 17, verse 3. This means everlasting life. They're coming to know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. Now, the Jehovah Witness is using this to show the only true God is different from Jesus. Jesus is not the only true God. The only true God sent Jesus, so Jesus can't be the only true God. In God's timing, Black Smurf, not yours. Okay, so are you ready now for the exegesis? Because I'm going to show you how to respond to several groups. How you use John 17, 3 against the Jehovah Witness, against the Muslim, and against the anti-Trinitarian Unitarian heretics. To begin with, 
Let's start at John 17, verses 1 to 2. Let's unpack it by looking at the context. Guys, do you really want me to unpack this? Or it's going to be too much and you want me to stop? Because I'm here to serve you. And we're going to use the Jehovah's Witness Bible for the most part. The Jehovah's Witness Bible for the most part. And may the Lord make the sound of my voice pleasing to your ears. All right. Here's how I use this passage against the Muslims who misquote John 17, 3, and Joe's witnesses and Unitarians. I don't start, stop at verse 3. I start at verses 1 and 2. Okay. Number 1. Let's read. Verses 1 and 2. Jesus spoke these things, and raising his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that your Son may glorify you. Just as you've given him authority over all flesh, so that he may give everlasting life to all those whom you have given to him. Now, pay attention, focus, because now I'm going to show you how to turn this against the Muslims. When a Muslim quotes John 17, 3, to show Jesus is Muslim, because he made the shahada, the Father is the only true God, and Jesus Christ is a messenger he sent. You start at verses 1 and 2. You ask the Muslim. In fact, if Abdullah is here, he can answer me if he wants. Okay. Number one, did Muhammad say the only true God, Allah, is the father of Jesus who glorifies Jesus in the way that Jesus glorifies the father? Are you with me there? See, Abdullah said no. Did you catch it? Abdullah said no. But Abdullah, Jesus said he is the son of who glorifies the Father in the same way that the Father glorifies him. That's number one. The Quran says, no. Jesus is not the Son that the Father glorifies in the same way that the Son glorifies the Father. Second question for my friend Abdullah. Can a creature, could Muhammad have said, Oh Allah, glorify me so that I can glorify you. Making it conditional. I'll glorify you if you glorify me. Could a creature, could Muhammad have said that? Abdullah? Could Muhammad have said that? Can a Muslim say that? Guys, did you hear what he just said? He said it's blasphemous. But you just read Jesus saying, Father, glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. Glorify me so that I can glorify you. Glorify me the way I glorify you. So Abdullah just admit, Jesus, if he's a creature, is blaspheming, but Jesus is not a blasphemer, which means that Jesus is not a creature. He must be equal to the Father. Second question for Abdullah. In verse 2, Jesus says, The Father has appointed me, his Son, to have authority, rule over all flesh. Okay, Abdullah, since Muhammad is flesh, your prophet is flesh, your flesh, Jesus says, I, the Son, have authority over all flesh. Does this agree with Islam? Because this means Jesus saying, I'm the son who has power over Muhammad, your prophet, authority over Muhammad. I rule over Muhammad. I rule over you, Abdullah. I rule over all Muslims. I rule over all humans. All humans are subject to me. I rule over them as the son. Does this agree with Muhammad and the Quran? Does this agree with Muhammad and, and the Quran? Thank you, Rebel Mark. Never. Guys, I'm telling you, keep praying for him. Never. Anonymous, don't answer, please. I'm talking to Abdullah. Please respect me to help this man. Don't answer, Anonymous. Let the Muslim answer. Please, guys. Okay? Okay, did you catch it? Never. The second part of that verse, Abdullah, he says... The Son, He, the Son Jesus, will give everlasting life to everyone. Abdullah, pay attention. 1611, I love you, brother. Just pray for him. Just The reason why I don't want comments is so that he doesn't get distracted reading other comments. I want his focus on the Word of God. That's why I'm telling you don't comment. Because what happens is when you comment, he's going to be reading the comments, and he won't be able to focus. Don't let Satan use you to distract him. Let him focus by the power of Jesus Christ. Okay? Pay attention. Abdullah, in verse 2, Jesus says, Jesus says in verse 2, that he is the son who will give everlasting life to everyone that the father gives him. Everlasting life in the Bible, Abdullah, means 
Jesus will raise the dead at the last day. And Jesus will transform believers to live forever in physical bodies that cannot be destroyed. Does, does the Quran agree that at the last day, Jesus is God's son who will raise the dead, Yom al -Qiyam, and then make them alive and preserve them so they can never die and never be destroyed? Does the Quran agree with what Jesus said about himself? Let's disagree with the Quran. Does this agree with the Quran? Guys, did you hear what he said? No, the Quran says Allah does that. So Abdullah, if Jesus says he does that, doesn't that mean that Jesus is claiming to be God in the flesh, even though he's not the Father? Doesn't that prove that Jesus is claiming things that only God can claim? And he's claiming it for himself as the Son, who's not the Father? Abdullah? See that? Now don't comment and text. Send this guy out of here. Don't comment or text. Rejoice in your hearts and start praying. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're seeing with our eyes what your Holy Spirit is doing in this heart of this Muslim because you want to save him. In your hearts, don't text. Just say it or out loud. Now, Abdullah, I'm going to give you other verses to go with John 17, verse 2. Here's what our Lord says in John 6, 39 to 40. What Jesus says in John 6, 39 to 40. John 6, verses 39 to 40. What a blessing today on the Lord's day. Abdullah, this is Jesus speaking again. This is the will of the Father who has sent me. So I'm not the Father. I'm the Father's Son, and he sent me. This is his will, Abdullah. And Jesus is speaking to you. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I hope you hear the voice of Jesus speaking to you. This is the will of the Father who sent me. That of all whom he has given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up at the last day. Yom al qiyam Yom al din This is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son, not a prophet, not Rasul Isa ibn Maryam, whoever sees the Son and believes in him, the Son, may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Abdullah, according to the Quran, it is Allah who raises people up at the last day and gives them life. Jesus says, I, the son of the father, I will do that. I will raise them up at the last day. And those who look to me and believe I'm the son, I will give them everlasting life. They will never go to hell. Are these the words of a prophet? Are these the words of a man? Can a man who fears God say these things? Or are these the words of someone who thinks he's God Almighty in the flesh? God Almighty who became man. What are these words? Yeah, smoke and mirrors. You know, you're a dog that I muzzled, you son of Satan. Guys, thou shall not pontificate. Take a picture of this. Look what Abdullah Ban said. Then why Zechariah says Jesus never claimed to be God when Jesus clearly does? Guys, take an image of this. Thou shalt not pontificate. Here you go. A Muslim now sees why Zechariah is a liar. Let me repeat. Then why Zechariah says Jesus never claimed to be God when Jesus clearly does? It's okay. Don't don't. It's okay. Don't don't block them yet. It's okay, Andrew. It's all right. Just leave it alone. Mahdi, Bakhri, do you want me to embarrass and humiliate you? Because the miracles that Jesus is doing on the last day are things that only Allah can do. So if you're saying Allah allowed Jesus to do that, you just said Allah committed shirk. Hold on, guys, please, please, Hafsa. Let me expose this Muhammadan because he just condemned Allah for committing shirk. That Allah is a sinner who committed shirk. So Mahdi, show me in your Quran where someone other than Allah will raise the dead at the last day. Ya Munafiq. Let me embarrass this guy. Mahdi, I know you're being illiterate like your prophet. Listen to me again. Show me in the Quran where someone other than Allah will raise the dead at the last day. Show me from your Quran. Ya Munafiq.
Show me from your Quran, or I'm going to send you to Mecca to kiss the black stone. Where does your Quran say someone other than Allah will raise the dead at the last day? Okay, so Mahdi, are you saying that Jesus said Allah made me his partner because Allah appointed me his son to raise the dead at the last day? Do you believe that? That Jesus will do what your Allah does and he'll raise the dead at the last day because Allah wants him to? Making Jesus Allah's partner? Is that what you're saying? Because that's what we just said. That's what Jesus just said. No, ya munafik. I just read to you what Jesus said. One more time, John 6, 39 to 40. Jesus says, I will raise them up at the last day. Are you an Ummi, you didn't read it? Here it goes again. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all whom he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. This is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God, who at the last day will raise the dead from their graves and make them alive? Yes or no? Ya munafik. Ya mushrik. Okay, so then shut your mouth and don't tell me Allah allowed Jesus to do this because Allah is allowing Jesus to do what only God can do, which means Jesus is the partner of Allah. So either your God is a mushrik because he took a creature and made him his partner or Jesus is one with the Father and God. Okay, furthermore, Mahdi, do you believe God is the Father and Jesus is the Son? Do you believe... God is the Father or Jesus is the, is the Son? No, your prophet didn't do any great miracle. Ya munafik, ya kathab, because the Quran doesn't say your prophet split the moon. It says the moon was split. Show me the ayah where it says your prophet split the moon. Now notice what he said. Allah is the Father to no one. But Jesus said God is his Father and he is the Son. Do you believe that? I just read it to you, John 6, 39, 40. Jesus said, God is the Father and I am his son. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Okay. So don't chime in. Sit and listen if you don't want to get blocked. I don't want you to chime in. You just help me prove from Jesus' words, your prophet Muhammad is the son of Satan and Antichrist. So you can stay here and listen. Don't chime in or I'll block you. Okay, guys. Now, are you guys learning how to refute these objections? Are you guys learning how to refute Muslims and put them in a corner where they have no answer? Are you learning now, guys? So Abdullah, who's a sincere Muslim, sincere Muslim sees. Mahdi, who's still steeped in the lies of Muhammad, is seeing, but he wants to deny. Okay. So notice what Mahdi said. Allah is a father to no one. But that means Jesus and John condemned Allah of Muhammad as a Satan and Muhammad as an Antichrist. Because Jesus said, God is the father and I am a son. So thank you, Mahdi, for proving that Jesus in the New Testament claimed to be God, the son of God, proving your prophet was an agent of the devil. Okay, guys, did you hear what Abdullah Man just said? Kiss this guy, pray for him. Abdullah Man just said, Muslims shouldn't use New Testament against Christians. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the miracle before our eyes that a Muslim is seeing the power of your word. Save him, Lord, and save Mahdi, Lord Jesus. Save him too. Save them all for your glory. Okay, folks. Abdullah and now Mahdi showed you how to use John 17, 3. Now you guys can text. Guys, you can text now. Go ahead. Okay. Abdullah and Mahdi showed you how to properly use John 17, 3 against Islam, as well as Jehovah's Witnesses. Did everyone see it? What did I do? I didn't start with verse 3, because John 17 does not start with verse 3. John 17, 3 starts at verse 1. If you read the context, Jesus is not saying the Father is the only true God to the exclusion of the Son. He's the only true God. I'm not. He's saying the only true God is my father 
who glorifies me in the same way that I glorify him, who's appointed me to do what only God can do, raise the dead to immortal life. In other words, Jesus saying the Father is the only true God to the exclusion of all other gods, not to the exclusion of me, because I'm one with the only true God, and I can do everything that the only true God can do because I'm one with him in essence and power. Are you getting it now? So John 17, 3 cannot be used to show that Jesus is saying, you're the only true God, I'm not. That's not what he says. Did you read verses 1 and 2? 1 and 2, he has already said, he's my father, I'm his son. He glorifies me in the way I glorify him. No creature can say that. And he's appointed me to give everlasting life to every believer he entrusts to me. Now, here's my question. What kind of attributes, what kind of attributes, what kind of attributes? Mahdi, you know you're going to embarrass yourself, right? Mahdi. Okay, guys, let me now have fun with this, this munafik. Mahdi, you just admit to everyone, Allah permitted Jesus to create a bird from clay and breathe into it and make it alive, right? Allah allowed Jesus to do that? Hold on, guys. I'm about to, I'm going to start blocking my mods for blocking these Muslims. Okay, Mahdi, listen to me. Engage me. So you just admit in the Quran, Allah allowed Jesus to create a bird and breathe into that bird and make it alive, right? Isn't that how Allah created Adam? Allah created an Adam from clay and breathed into Adam and he came to life, right? Right? Chapter 3, verse 49 of the Quran. Chapter 5, verse 110. Guys, listen. Let me, okay. Good. So I want you to tell everyone, you just admit your Quran makes Jesus a creator with your God. You just said Allah allowed Jesus to create from clay exactly like Allah created Adam from clay. Jesus created a bird from clay. Breathe into the bird, and it came to life exactly the way Allah created Adam from clay. Breathe into Adam, he came to life. So Jesus creates exactly like your God creates. So I want you to admit, my Quran <clears throat> pictures Jesus as a creator with Allah. Allah allowed Jesus to be a co-creator. Allah made Jesus his partner in creating. Al-Masihu Akbar. Thank you, Mahdi. For you using the Quran to prove Jesus is your God, Muhammad's God. Now, let me ask you a question. Can you show me any other prophet or even angel in your Quran where Allah allowed to create like from clay and breathe into that clay and make it a living being like Jesus? Did Allah allow this for anyone else? And it doesn't say he gave him temporary permission. You're lying. Did Allah allow anyone else in your Quran to create from clay and then breathe into the clay and make it a living being the way Allah and Jesus did? Did Allah do this for anyone else? Did he do it for anyone else? No, it's guys, it's okay. Calm down on the blocking. It's okay now. Let them comment. I know you guys got excited. Only block for Abdullah with Mahdi. As long as you guys don't uh, uh, debate Mahdi, don't debate him. Let me deal with him. Can you show me someone else besides Jesus? Thank you. So Jesus is a spirit from Allah. Now, can you show me where someone other than Jesus is a spirit that came from Allah to become flesh from Mary? Mahdi, you're not answering my question. Can you show me some other prophet, including your fake prophet, your fake prophet? No. I will give you $10 million to show me where it says Jesus is a spirit created by Allah. You're lying because in Surah Al-Nisa for 171, it says, Ruhin minhu, a spirit from him. Even Abdullah Man just refuted you. Guys, look what Abdullah Man just said. Jesus is Ruh Allah, Allah's own spirit. Alhamdul Masih. Can you show me, Mahdi, where it says Jesus was a spirit created by Allah? Show that to me. Surat An-Nisa, 
chapter 4, verse 171, says that Jesus is a spirit that came from Allah. It doesn't say created by Allah. Ya, you liar. Ya kadhab. Ya munafiq. Ya kadhab. Ya munafiq. No, Mahdi, it doesn't say Jesus was created by Allah's word be. It says Adam was created by Allah's word be. Are you lying to me? You're misquoting your own Quran in my presence? Chapter 3, verse 59, doesn't say Allah said to Jesus be. It says the likeness of Jesus is like that of Adam, whom Allah created from the dust and said be. He said be to Adam. But Jesus is a spirit from God that came to Mary. Stop lying to me, ya kadhab. So answer my question again. Here are my two questions. Mahdi, here are my two questions. Listen, show me someone other than Jesus and Allah that creates from clay and breathes into it and makes it a living being. Can you show me someone else besides Jesus and Allah? No, they were not created by the word be. You're lying because it says Allah breathed his spirit into Mary. Surah Al-Tahrim 6612. Mahdi, what did Allah breathe into Mary? And why did he breathe into Mary his ruh? Abdullah Aman, did you see what he just said? Thou shalt not pontificate. Guys, save this. Abdullah Aman says, I think both Jesus and Quran are uncreated according to Quran. Wow. Save that, folks. Abdullah Aman just said. The Quran teaches that both Jesus and Quran are uncreated. Wow. He just said that Jesus is God. And he says the Quran proves it. Okay. Mahdi, Surah Al Tahrim 66:12 says Allah breathed his spirit into Mary's private part. Why did he breathe the spirit into Mary? What was that spirit that entered Mary? Anyway, Mahdi, do me a favor, Mahdi. You want to stay in my channel? Do you want to stay here and listen? Do you want to learn and listen? Again, it says he breathed the spirit into Mary. It came out of Allah. Are you saying that a part of Allah was created? Mahdi, you're not listening. Let's try this again. It says Allah breathed the spirit. That means it came out of Allah, like my breath comes out of me. Are you saying that there's a part of Allah that's created? Ya kafir? Are you saying that what Allah breathed out, that the spirit that he breathed out, that came out of him, there was part of him, there's something part of him that's created? Are you a munafik? A kafir? For saying that, Something that Allah breathed out from himself can be created. So there's something created in Allah. It's stuck for Allah. You're lucky you're not living at the time of the Sahaba. They'd kill you. No, I'm not talking about Surah Al-Maryam, Mahdi. You're not listening. Surah Al-Mahdi, you're not listening. Listen. Surah Al-Tahrim says Allah breathed the spirit into Mary. Let's read it again. Post it for him. You know I'm going to have to do another session on John 17, 3, right? Because you see the Spirit wants me to address this. Okay, read with me, Mahdi, your Quran, Surah Al-Tahrim. And Mary, daughter of Imran, whose body was chaste, wherefore we breathe therein something of our spirit. Here it says, stuck for Allah, stuck for Allah. Guys, he just made Gabriel Allah. He said, Jibril was the one who blew Jesus and Mary. No, it's Allah speaking. Mahdi, it says we breathe our spirit. Who's speaking? Mahdi, who's speaking there? Who said we breathe our spirit into Mary? He just made Gabriel Allah, his, his God and creator. What a munafiq kafir kathab. 66.12 says we, who's speaking? Who's speaking, Mahdi? Abdullah Aman just refuted Mahdi. Here he goes again. Guys, read what Abdullah Aman just said. Allah breathed the spirit, not Jibril. He is mushrik. Abdullah just called a Muslim a mushrik. Wow, Abdullah.
Okay, now notice what Mahdi did. He just made the Quran the words of Jibreel. Mahdi just made the words of the Quran the words of Jibreel. Who said we breathe our spirit? Who's doing the breathing? Ahmadi, don't pretend you're listening. Who said, I will breathe my spirit into Mary? Was that Jibreel or was that Allah? Who breathed the spirit into Mary? According to 6612. You're wasting my time now, Mahdi. Who's speaking in Surah Al-Tahrim 6612, where it says, we breathe our spirit into Mary? Who's speaking? Is it Allah saying, I breathe my spirit or is it Gabriel? Don't make me ask the same question when it's in front of your face. Mahdi, I didn't ask you what we means. Stop playing games with me. I'm going to block you. Who is speaking in 6612? This is now the third time I'm asking you. Don't play games with me. Who is speaking in 6612? Who is saying, I breathe my spirit into Mary? Send Ant out of here. Send him to his rat cage. Slime. So guys, he said, Allah. But you just lied. You said, Gabriel breathed Jesus into Mary. But the ayah said, Allah breathed the spirit into Mary. Why would you lie to us and say, Gabriel breathed it, when it says, Allah breathed his spirit into Mary? Why would you lie to us and say it was Gabriel? Why would you lie to us? Why would you lie to me when the Quran said, Allah breathed his spirit into Mary? You said, oh, that was Gabriel who breathed. You know you are now a mushrik. You are now a munafik. You are now a kafir. And you are a kathab. You're all four in one because of you lying and twisting the Quran. A'udhu billah min Muhammad rajim. A'udhu billah min Muhammad rajim. Okay. Let me try this again. Who breathed the spirit into Mary, Gabriel or Allah, according to the Quran Mahdi? Your final chance, and we're going to then block you. Who breathed the spirit into Mary, Allah or Gabriel, according to 6612 and 2191 of the Quran, Surah Al-Anbiya? Let's try this one more time, see if you're getting it. If not, I'm going to have to block you. One more time. According to the Quran, did Allah breathe the spirit into Mary or Gabriel? Who did it? One more time, according to your Quran. Okay, you see this guy, he's a pagan. He just said Gabriel blew the, blew the spirit. And the Quran says it's Allah speaking. So you guys see, he just made Gabriel Allah. Now let me break down the logic of this pagan stone smoocher. May God have mercy on his pathetic soul. The Quran says, Allah breathed the spirit into Mary. He said that was Gabriel. Guys, understand? He just identified Gabriel as the God who spoke those verses in the Quran. He just admit that the person saying, we breathe our spirit, that was Gabriel. He just identified Gabriel as Allah, his God. Because the verses say, Allah breathed the spirit. This pagan said, Gabriel breathed the spirit. That means he just made Jibreel, Gabriel, Allah. You pagan, you idolater, you mushrik. If you're living at the time of Muhammad, he would have killed you. Omar would have chopped off your neck with his sword. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Send him a flower. You know, Say thank you for proving Gabriel is your God. He is Allah. He's the one who speaks. He's partners with Allah. Yay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, Mahdi. Do you want me to block you? If you want me to block you, keep commenting. If not, sit there and listen with the hope the Holy Spirit will give you eyes to see. Don't comment anymore. I don't want to be distracted by you. I don't want to be distracted by you. I want to focus now. Sit there and shh, ish, ish, ish. Down boy. No more of your lies. You just got embarrassed. You exposed Muhammad and your Quran being from the devil. Sit. If you want to listen, you can sit and listen. I'm not. I'm blocking you. So I'm telling you, no more comments from you. All right, guys. Did you guys get blessed by this exchange thus far? You have one sincere Muslim who's on his way to worshiping Jesus. 
Because Abdullah just admitted, according to the Quran, Jesus is uncreated. He just said that the Quran teaches Jesus is uncreated. Well, if Jesus is uncreated, Abdullah just admit Jesus is God Almighty. And you have this other Muslim who's still blind until the Holy Spirit gives him eyes to see. See the difference now? Yeah, here, here's what it is. Here's his comment. I'm posting it again. Abdullah Amani, I think both Jesus and Quran are uncreated according to the Quran. Send this guy out of here. Send this guy out of here, Mahdi. He's too blind. He's too much of a pagan demonized to see the truth. Get him out of here. Guys, send him out of here, please. Quick, admins. Quick, mods. Out of here. All right. So learn one thing. Discern who has eyes to see and ears to hear. Focus on them. The, those who are demonized and too blind, who will pervert even their own fake book to lie and blaspheme, send them on their way. Do not give what is sacred to God, dogs or cast pearls before swine. May the Holy Spirit later open his heart, but you don't waste your time. Okay? So Mahdi is a waste of time until the Holy Spirit opens his mind. Send him on his way. He's still a dog and a swine until the Holy Spirit <clears throat> opens his heart and mind. Something the Spirit must do. I can't do it. So send him on his way. You focus on those who are sincere. Don't waste your time and energy fighting and debating for the sake of fighting and debating. Zero in on those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Focus on them like Abdullah. Okay? That's what I want you to learn. But now to regroup and come back to the issue. Do you see how John 17 verses 1 to 2 Jesus is king. Don't ask me a question about Surah 355. Don't change the subject on me. You know the rules. Focus. Okay. John 17, verses 1 to 2. You saw how, if you read John 17, verse 3, in light of verses 1 to 2. If you read verse 3, John 17, 3, in light of verses 1 to 2, the last thing Jesus is doing is denying that he's God. Right? Did you guys see that? Did everyone see that? Guys, we're hitting a record. We're close to 190. Pray. This increases for the glory of Jesus. Pray. I want more people. Okay. Guys, let's regroup and focus. Okay. Let's regroup and focus. If you read John 17, 3, in light of verses 1 and 2, then it's clear in verses 1 and 2, Jesus claims to be the divine Son of God, whom the Father glorifies in the same way that the Son glorifies the Father. No mere creature can say that. That's number one. The second thing Jesus says, that he, the Son, will grant everlasting life to everyone the Father entrusts to his care. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. John 17, verse 2. What kind of attributes, characteristics, must Jesus possess to be able to take a group of believers no matter how many, resurrect them physically at the last day and then preserve them immortal where they will never, ever die, where their physical bodies can never be destroyed and where they will never, ever sin again. And he's the one that's going to enable them and preserve them in that state forever. What kind of power must he have to do that? Amen, Christ is almighty. These arguments are deep and powerful from the Holy Spirit. They're irrefutable. That's why I keep telling you, learn this stuff. And you will be ready to do battle for the glory of Christ. So what kind of power must Jesus possess to take a host of believers, raise them physically, turning their physical bodies into indestructible bodies, physical bodies that can never be destroyed, changing them to become morally incorruptible where they can never sin again and preserve them in that state forever and ever and ever. Send Snake out of here. There's this guy again. Get out of here, man. I've already refuted your nonsense in this series. Get out of here, dude. Block him. He must be all-powerful, right? He also must be omniscient, right? Why omniscient? Because he has to know who are those that God is giving him. He has to know how many 
are being entrusted to, to them. And he has to be with them to preserve all of them. So notice, he has to know who are the sheep that God is entrusting to his care. He has to be with them personally to preserve them. So in verse 2, the son just claimed to be all-powerful, present everywhere, and all-knowing. He knows how many the sheep are, who they are, and he's personally with all of them to preserve them indestructible. That's verse 2. That's verse 2, right? So now let's read John 17, verse 2 and 3 together. John 17, verses 2 and 3 together. As you have given him authority over flesh, he will give eternal life to all whom you have given him. This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Can I ask you a question? If Jesus just said he's all-powerful, present everywhere, all-knowing, do you think in verse 3 he's not going to deny that he's God? That the Father is the only true God to the exclusion of me. He's the only true God, not me. When only God is all-powerful, all-knowing, present everywhere. You think that's what he was doing? Uh, Derek Shaji, you know you're going to get blocked for that, right? Because I'm going to show you Jesus does know everything on earth and you got to go because now you're playing the devil's advocate and you're going to embarrass yourself. Let me read to you John 16, 30 to 31 to see if Jesus is all knowing and then you have to leave. Don't come back here. John 16, 30 to 31. Let's read. Okay. Now we know that you know everything and do not need anyone to question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, do you not believe? Now, Derek, do you see that Jesus is said to know everything and Jesus didn't deny it? Did you see that? Put a one because I want to block you right now. You got to go. You see that, right? The same gospel of John. Jesus knows everything. Do you see that, Derek? Okay. Do not chime in. And bring up a passage, because I know what you're referring to, that I've addressed. And then I have to go on a tangent to explain it. Be patient, listen, and learn. Because now you're going to make this session longer than normal. When your answer, I know what you're referring to, Derek, better than you do. It's Mark 13, 32. The sun doesn't know the dare hour. I've done dozens of sessions, written dozens of articles explaining what it means and what it doesn't mean. I cannot then address it here. And even if you were to mention that, how does that refute the fact that Jesus has to be all-knowing to know who the sheep are, how many the sheep are, and be present with them? So now explain to me, Derek Shaji, how can Jesus not be all-knowing if he has to know how many sheep there are and has to be personally with them to oversee all their activities, everything they say and do? George Lopez. I agree with people who have the courage to debate me. Are you man enough to call me on, on Skype so I can muzzle you like the wicked, blasphemous dog, son of Satan you are? You wicked dog, George Lopez? And you're no comedian, okay? Are you with me there? Now you wonder why I get animated. The guy comes out of nowhere and tries to throw away. Oh, but doesn't he know everything? Derek, you know, I, I, man, I, I don't know. I think I need to let you go, brother. This is not for you, this channel. Instead of going and seeing if I had sessions on Jesus being all-knowing, you decide to throw in a monkey wrench. Yeah, get him out of here, guys. He needs to go. God bless you, brother. Go find another channel. Guys, it's better. I don't need people like this uh, in the channel to be a distraction. Okay? Sorry about that. I'm going to repeat it again. Even though I want people to come, I want quality people who will listen, not chime in, pontificate, hear me out. And make sure that they've already checked the YouTube channel to see if I have addressed these questions. So now because of this guy being used of the devil unbeknownst to him, does Jesus know everything? Let's go to John 16, verse 30, 31. John 16, 30 to 31. Okay. Uh, Kasim, how do you know that your mother wasn't a dog, but she's a human? How do you know she wasn't a dog in human form giving birth to a dog like you get Kasim out of here john 16 30 31 okay now we know that you know everything now we know that you know everything let me repeat it again now we know that you know everything 
and do not need anyone to question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Now, did Jesus say, shut up, don't say that. I don't, Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Did you catch it? So according to the gospel of John, am I right when I said that for Jesus to know how many sheep there are and to be personally with them, to preserve them, he must be all-knowing? Am I right according to what you just read? Am I right? You see that, right? John 16, 33. And this is, by the way, the Jehovah Witness Bible. This is the Jehovah Witness Bible. So the Jehovah Witness Bible has the apostles confessing, you know everything and don't need to be questioned. No one needs to challenge you to see if you know what you're talking about. You know everything. Now, guys, this is before the resurrection, is it not? Jesus hasn't died. Before the resurrection, before his death, he knows everything. What about after his resurrection? After he's raised from the dead, does he know everything? John 21, 17. Let's see. See what this guy did? I hope his distraction is still blessing you. I hope though he was being used of the devil to distract without him knowing he's used of the devil, God is now using it to glorify Christ. Because now you see from the gospel of John, Jesus knows everything. And he knew it before he died while he was on earth. While on earth, as a man, he was still God who knew everything before he died. After he died in his glorified physical body as a glorified man, he still knows everything. Because notice John 21, 17. John 21, 17. Watch. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you have affection for me? Peter became grieved that he asked him the third time, do you have affection for me? So he said to him, Lord, you are aware of all things. You are aware of all things. Let me repeat it a third time. You are aware of all things. You know that I have affection for you. Jesus said to him, feed my little sheep. So what is Peter saying? Why are you even asking? You are aware of everything that goes on. You are aware of all things. You are aware of what's in my heart. You already know the answer. Did you catch it now? Do you catch it now? So is it clear that according to the gospel of John, before Jesus' death and resurrection, after Jesus' death and resurrection, before he died in his physical body that was weak and could, could be put to death, and after his resurrection, where he raised his physical body and made it immortal, indestructible, indestructible, before and after, while on earth, as a weak, flesh and blood human being, prone to death, and after his resurrection, now a glorified man with a glorified physical body, he knew everything. He knows all things because he's not just man, but he's God. And this is the Jehovah Witness translation. This is the Jehovah Witness translation. Everyone got it? So now I'm going to give you a treat because this guy mentioned it. I'm going to give you three sections from the Jehovah Witness Bible back to back. So let's start. 1 John 3.20. 1 John 3.20. With John 16, 29 to 31. John 16, 29 to 31. And John 21, 17. Let's go over this again. 1 John chapter 3, verse 20. Back to back with John 16, 29 to 31. And John 21, 17. Now, guys, read with me. Read with me. John, who wrote this letter and wrote the Gospel of John. Notice what he says. Regarding whatever our hearts may condemn us, condemn us in, because God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Amen, John. God knows all things. But now notice what he says about Jesus. Read, read, John 16, 29 to 31. His disciples said, see, now you are speaking plainly and are not using comparisons. You're speaking plainly, not figuratively. Plain, clear speech. We're getting it. Now we know that you know all things and you do not need to have anyone question you. By this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered, do you now believe? Do you believe now? And John 21, 17, Lord you are aware of all things. You know that I have affection for you. Did you catch it? In John's theology, the gospel of John, letter of John, God the Father knows all things. Jesus knows all things, knows everything. He's aware of all things. Why? 
because God the Father and Jesus are one in essence, equal in divine ability, even though they're not the same person. Everyone got it? I don't know why you put two. I have no idea why you put two, Punisher Lee. Why didn't you get it? Go reread it. Everyone got it? Did you catch it? John says in 1 John 3.20, God knows all things. John then, in his gospel records, the apostle saying, you're speaking plainly, not figuratively, not in parables to confuse us. You're speaking plainly, and because you're speaking plainly, now we've realized, now we've come to the conclusion, you, Jesus, on earth, before your death, know everything, all things. You don't need anyone to question you. After his resurrection, Peter says, why are you asking me if I love you? Lord, you are aware of everything. You know all things, so you already know if I love you or not. Clear? Do I move on? So, if Jesus knows all things, according to the Gospel of John, if Jesus has the power to preserve all believers that the Father gives to him and preserve them incorruptible, indestructible, that they can never be destroyed, and then raise them in bodies that are indestructible, that can never be destroyed, and change them to become morally incorruptible, or they cannot sin, so they can't die anymore. And he does that for all believers. How does this not prove that Jesus is all-knowing, present everywhere, and all-powerful? So are, do you want to now convince me that in verse 3 of John 17, Jesus saying, you're the only true God. I'm not the only true God. I'm a creature you sent. And people need to know that. That's what Jesus was saying? If we read the context, everyone get it now? How to refute the misuse of John 17, verse 3? Does everyone see how you refute the misinterpretation application of John 17, verse 3? Okay, now let's unpack John 17, verse 3. Let's unpack that itself. Let's unpack that one as well. Because we went to verses 1 and 2, but let's unpack verse 3. This means everlasting life. They're coming to know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. Did you see what Jesus said? Jesus just said everlasting life comes by knowing the Father intimately, having fellowship with the Father, and communion with the Father, and Jesus Christ. Jesus said you cannot have everlasting life by just knowing the Father. You can only have everlasting life by knowing the Father and me. So two things. Jesus just made your salvation dependent on knowing him to the same degree that you know the Father, the only true God. Secondly, how in the world can you know Jesus intimately, have fellowship with Jesus intimately, and have communion with Jesus intimately if Jesus isn't omnipresent, omniscient? Because here Jesus is saying your everlasting life depends on having an intimate knowledge fellowship, relationship with the Father and me. But wait, Jesus, how can I on earth have an intimate knowledge of you, knowing you in an intimate sense, having fellowship with you, communion with you, if you're not aware that I'm coming to you to have this fellowship and communion, and you're not able then to reciprocate and have fellowship and communion with me? You understand that John 17 again proves that Jesus must be God for you to be able to have fellowship with him in the same way that you have fellowship with God? See, I can have fellowship with God because God is omnipresent, omniscient. He knows who I am. He knows I'm seeking his face. He knows I'm praying to him. He knows I'm speaking to him. He knows I'm praising him. And he's in fellowship with me. But Jesus says everlasting life isn't just knowing him having fellowship with him. You better know me and have fellowship with me to the same degree that you have fellowship with God. Otherwise, there is no everlasting life. So he connects your salvation with knowing him intimately, loving him intimately, 
having fellowship with him intimately to the same degree that you know, love, and fellowship with the Father. And you're telling me John 17, 3 refutes Jesus' deity? Really? That's what John 17, 3 is doing? Showing that Jesus is a creature? You, you understand the implication of what I just unpacked? I want, I'm hoping you're getting it. Because Jesus said you are to worship him. And why listen to you as you're barking? Why don't I muzzle you? Get him out of here. And your God, Allah, worships Muhammad. Okay. Everyone with me here? Don't unhide him, Andrew. Block him, Andrew. Everyone got it? Do you see how John 17 verse 3 itself shows Jesus must be God for that to be true? I'm, I don't know if you didn't get it. We went from 185 down. Come on, guys. Increase that number. Come on. We want to get 200, not decrease in Jesus' name. Okay. If you didn't get it, I can't move on. Do you understand how even this verse assumes that Jesus is one with the only true God? He is one in essence with the only true God? You got it now? Because I want to move on to five and we'll be done for today's session. So you understand. If you really understand it, that means if I now ask you, how does this prove Jesus is deity? That means you're able to now communicate it. So if a Jehovah's Witness brings it up or a Muslim brings it up, you're ready then. That's what you're telling me. So you won't disappoint the Lord and drop the ball and give an excuse for a person's unbelief, right? Because you understand, Luisa, you're getting it. How verse 3 in itself shows that Jesus must be God for that statement to be true. Verse 3 itself shows Jesus must be God for that statement to be true. You know that, right? Eternal, everlasting, incorruptible life is yours by knowing the Father intimately and Jesus Christ. You cannot have everlasting, incorruptible life by knowing the Father alone. You have to know me just as much as you know the Father. You have to have communion with me to the same extent you have communion with the Father. Otherwise, there is no everlasting life apart from knowing me as you know the Father. Who does Jesus think he is? Who does Jesus think he is? No, stupid. Jesus created the angels, according to John. You stupid stone-worshipping demon. Get him out of here, guys. He keeps coming under different names, this guy. He won't stop. See, he's a demon. Now, that's a dog. That's the verse that applies to him. A filthy dog and a swine that you don't give him what is sacred or cast pearls because he just wants to bark because he wants to defend his prophet, a son of Satan. And this is the New World Translation. If, not, if you're still confused, let me know. Luis and everyone else got it? Exactly, Remy. And that's why you need to treat a dog according to his nature and muzzle him. Everyone got it? Abdullah, you got it? Abdullah, you see how Jesus is not saying he's not God? Now, how many of you, now many of you already know this because you've already studied on your own, you've been with me and you've listened to previous sessions and read my articles. But for those of you hearing the breakdown of John 17 for the first time. How many of you are blown away to see that even the verse that is used against Jesus proves that Jesus is God, one with the Father? To see that the verse itself assumes Jesus is equal to the Father in essence and ability because eternal life, everlasting life, is dependent on knowing him just as much as it's dependent on knowing the Father. What a thunk it. So let's top it off. Well, maybe I can. Yeah, we'll do. Okay. John 17, 5. Let's skip to John 17, 5. If, if no one's confused, let's go to John 17, 5. Man, this debate tired me out. I got tired. Tell me this guy's not a filthy dog, a son of Satan. Look how many names he comes under. Tell me this guy's not demon. A demon is tormenting, torturing him like it tormented and spiritually prostituted his prophet. Look, he won't stop. Like a madman, like a sick demon, he keeps coming, this, this guy, Mahdi Bakhri. He won't stop. Tell me he's not being inflicted by a demon. The demon is angry and causing him to foam and manifest like his prophet used to. 
Are you seeing how many names he came under? How many names he came under to attack and deny Jesus and rob Jesus of his glory? And you tell me he's not a rabid dog? No, because Luisa, you, I want you to see the spiritual nature of what we're doing. Luisa, the spirit realm is real. Satan is real. His demons are real. And they're working overtime to destroy the Christian witness, to attack the gospel, and to destroy Christian servants and stop them from preaching the gospel. The battle is real more than you can imagine. You get it now? You're seeing it. Because after all, why are you wasting your time? You don't believe? Go do something else. But you can't because the demon in him. No, go. Go attack. Don't let him talk about Jesus. No. Ah, ah, ah. Right? Manifesting like a rabid dog. Now you see why Jesus said, do not cast pearls before swine or give what is sacred to dogs. Okay, now John 17 verse 5. The spiritual battle is real. The spiritual battle is real. Satan is real, but Jesus is almighty to save. Now here, the New World Translation. The New World Translation. We're using their corrupt Bible to prove our point. Read John 17, 5. So now, Father, glorify me at your side with the glory that I had alongside you before the world was. One more time. Love you too, Bill. One more time. Guys, pay attention to how the Joe Witness translated verse 5. So now, Father, glorify me at your side with the glory that I had alongside you before the world was. So you ask the Joe Witness, show me a spirit creature that existed alongside Jehovah in the glory of Jehovah before the creation of the world. Did you see what Jesus just said? Father, the glory I had alongside of you. Uh, hey, Dale, I'm challenging you to a public debate. Because I already muzzled some of your Unitarians. I want to take you on. I will buy my own ticket and I'll fly to your school to muzzle you because you're a wicked son of the devil and I'm dying to debate you. Do you accept my debate challenge? You coward. Carl Xavier ran. I want you because you're the biggest demon of Unitarianism and I want to take you out. Do you agree to debate me, Dale? I want to hear record it because we're going to make it happen. Dr. Dale... Tuggy, the coward who thinks he's a logician who got schooled in his debates. I will decimate you and your false god, the devil that you worship. It's okay. Don't use that as an excuse. That doesn't wash with anyone. Do you accept my debate challenge or are you going to run like the dog that you are? I have no respect for you. You coward. And I'll be gentleman in the debate. I will obliterate you, but in a very scholarly manner. Do you accept the challenge? You coward, you son of Satan. Say it because I'll arrange it at my own expense, at your school, to muzzle you, you wicked, repulsive dog. Do you, you, you agree? Yes or no? You already got schooled by Brown as well as Steve Hayes and Chris James White. He'll school you too. But do you accept my challenge, you coward? Everyone's listening. We're calling you out. And we're going to title it, Dale Dougie, the dog of the devil runs. And I promise I'll be professional in my speech when I decimate you, you son of Satan. Do you accept my challenge? Yes or no? I want it here. Do you accept my challenge, you wicked demon, blasphemer of the true God? You're worse than Muhammad, the false prophet. Do you accept because we'll arrange it? Yes or no? I'm calling you out. It is him. It is his, his account. Okay, block this dog. You got it. The dog said no because I will decimate you and your demon by the power of Jesus, your God. You wicked dog. Get him out of here. Coward. Can't stand this guy. Okay. That's how you treat these blasphemous pigs. You got to record it, right? He said no. He said no. Dale Tuggy, this wicked demon, demonic Unitarian said no. And I'll be very professional debate. I won't insult him, but here I will. Filthy dog. You guys heard it, right? Everyone, he denied. He ran. No, it's okay. We, we got it now. Everyone saw it. Okay, now, John 17, verse 5. See all the demons manifested. Luisa, do you see how they're all manifesting? And I don't. I know you're not aware of who this guy is. Dr. Dale Tuggy is one of the leading Unitarian apologists 
attacking the Trinity and the deity of Christ because he's one of the most wicked, deceitful, repulsive tools of the devil in attacking the Trinity. He's one of their top guys. Okay, But you guys see how many people came out for this session? How many people came out to, for this session? Yeah. Mahdi, can you go and kiss this uh, black stone or go rape some woman captive like your filthy prophet used to and stop coming? Yep. Amen. Thank you, Revelation 22, 13. I'm quoting the words of Paul in Jesus' name. But guys, that means this is a blessed session, right? Blessed session. You know you're blessed when you get sons of the devil, demons attacking you and distracting. What a powerful session. Hallelujah. When they start coming out, you know you're doing something right. Glory to the triumph God. And in the midst of this, we're seeing God saving those who are lost like Abdullah. So the demons come out and start barking and foaming, and we muzzle them for the glory of Jesus. And then those who have eyes to see come and listen and learn and are transformed. Woo! I'm excited, man. Watch what I'm going to do to Marcus Rogers tonight. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Oh, John 17, verse 5. John 17, verse 5. Boy, I'm on fire today. Who's not on fire today, man? I'm exploding. God has blessed us. More people are coming. May they increase. Man, our God is real. You are almighty to say, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All right. John 17, verse 5. Let's, let's unpack this. John 17, verse 5. Yep. Tonight, Bible feast, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time. I'm going to be on What Do You Meme? Live session where John McCray and I are going to dismantle Mark, Marcus Rogers' objections to the Trinity and expose his God as another satanic counterfeit by the power of the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay. See, again, he shows up, Ahlan. Again, the Jackie. Man, dude, dude, tell me you're not demon-possessed like your prophet. How many accounts, man? Wow. Okay, John 17, verse 5. John 17, verse 5. Today I'm smoking, man. Yeah, he just posted the link. Sorry, guys. The demons won't let me finish John 17, verse 5. So now, Father, glorify me at your side with the glory that I had alongside you before the world was. Can I say that this is one of the most amazingly accurate translations of the Greek of John 17, verse 5? Thank you, Rebel Mark. God bless you, brother. One of the most amazingly accurate translations of John 17, 5, and it's from the Jehovah Witness Bible. It's from the Jehovah Witness Bible. G guys, look at how the, the Jehovah's Witnesses translated John 17, verse 5. Look at it again. Louisa, I know you're blessed. Magdalene, you're being blessed too. Hepsa, all of you, Anna. So now, Father, glorify me at your side with the glory I had alongside you before the world was. Wow. Catch it, guys. Jesus says, give me the glory along your side that I used to have at your side before the world began. Father, I want the glory that I had alongside of you at your side before the world began. I want that glory back that I set aside. Okay, now, ask the Jehovah Witness, quote a single verse, quote a single verse, where a creature, a spirit creature, an angel, was there, Side by side with Jehovah in the glory of Jehovah, where a creature in Jehovah existed side by side in the same glory. Show me that. Where do you find in the Old Testament? What you find in the Old Testament are creatures ascribing Jehovah glory, recognizing that Jehovah is glorious and glory belongs to him, but you don't find an angelic creature Side by side with Jehovah in the same glory. You don't find that. But here, let me show you what you do find. Psalm 29, verses 1 or 2. Psalm 29, verses 1 or 2. Give Jehovah his due, the sons of the mighty ones. Give Jehovah his due for his glory and strength. Now notice verse 2. Give Jehovah the glory, do his name. Bow down to Jehovah in holy adornment. You will not find a single verse in the Old Testament where an angelic creature exists 
side by side with Jehovah in the same glory, that Jehovah and a creature are side by side in the same glory, you won't find that. What you find is heavenly creatures giving Jehovah glo glory, acknowledging that he is glorious and worthy of glory, he alone. But Jesus said in John 17, verse 5, Father, give me the glory at your side, the glory I had alongside of you before the world was. So wait, Jesus, before the world was created, you weren't one of these spirit creatures who ascribed glory to Jehovah, but you were there side by side with the Father, alongside of the Father in the same glory? Yes, that's who I am. Do you see how John 17, if you read verses 1 to 5, actually prove Jesus is equal to the Father in power, in ability, in glory, so that Jesus is one with the only true God, his Father. He's not excluded from the Godhead of the Father. The Godhead, the deity, the divine essence of the Father, is possessed in all its fullness by the Son. That's what John 17 verses 1 to 5 teaches if you read context. Who didn't get it? Who didn't get it? Lord willing, I'm going to do another part of John 17 3 where I unpack 1 John 5 20, but not now because I think I gave you a lot of meat. Meat to bless you for the glory of the triumph God. Go re-listen to the session because God sent people to test these arguments. Not only did you hear, but you saw me actually use these points in an exchange with an open Muslim and a demonized Muslim who's too blind to see the truth. And you saw how the arguments were irrefutable. You saw it, right? And you even had a Muslim, Abdullah, whose heart is open, admit, yeah, Jesus is claiming to be God. Why is Zechariah saying Jesus never claimed to be God when he clearly does? And yeah, the Quran says Jesus is uncreated. Even a, mu a Muslim, Abdullah, is seeing it. And another Muslim is too demonized to accept it, but he can't refute it. So guys, what you're getting in these sessions, not only a loud Assyrian, an Assyrian who is gorgeous and good-looking and single, who's loud and shouting in your face, what you're getting is spiritually battle tested arguments you're getting spiritually battle tested arguments arguments we use in the spiritual battle perfected by the holy spirit that are irrefutable if you know how to use these arguments these spiritual weapons taking everyone captive for the true god father son holy spirit with that said it's now seven minutes to three in two more hours, in two more hours, I go live with John McRae. What do you mean? Refuting oneness, modalist, heretic, Marcus Rogers' objections against the Trinity. Thank you, Taylor. God bless you. Thank you, brother. Lord Jesus, bless all of you and shine his face on you. Lord Jesus, keep us in love with him. Lord Jesus, wash us in his blood. Lord Jesus, fill us with his Holy Spirit. Help us to love him perfectly, love each other, serve him, live for him, and die for him if necessary. And the Lord Jesus, save us from Satan, from our own sinful passion, from the corrupting influence of the world, and provide our daily bread until he calls us home or until he returns. And Lord Jesus, bless our loved ones, my daughters, and keep them safe and in love with him. Lord Jesus, be glorified. Increase in us. May we decrease, Lord, and sanctify our hearts to do it for your glory. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Son of God. One with the Father and the Spirit in Jesus' name. First and last, give him the link. Give them the link to what do you mean? There it goes, guys. Thank our sister, Netta. Lord Jesus, bless you, Netta. She just gave you the link. Two more hours, I go live. That's the link. Save it, folks, and join us. Okay? I'm not done. I got another session. Pray for my throat to be healthy and strong. I don't lose my voice. So that we can bless you and shake you and rock you and awe you by the power of the Holy Spirit in two hours' time. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Amen. We love you, Lord Jesus. Maranatha. Mar